Okay, so next we're going to be taking a look at Demon Knights number one. Uh, this is a comic book by Paul Cornell and Diogenes Nevis. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, is the, the artist on that book. Mm -hmm. um, so, th this is... Um, a lot of the books this week, I felt like, kind of a theme, and I don't know if this was DC or just the books that we happened to select, um, seems like a lot more supernatural themed kind of darker edge there are a lot of dark ones with this yeah. new launch i mean there there's some like um justice league dark that's coming right. up and a lot of titles but a lot of like supernatural like it just seemed like the, yeah. the ones we chose this week were a little skewed a bit more in that direction um even batwoman fought a ghost in her first yeah that's true so everything <laughs> was kind of like creepy supernatural october um, is coming up so yep so and we like that kind of stuff so the demon <clears throat> knights is definitely in that mode um it takes place primarily um in the dark ages so it's a book set in the past the initial mm -hmm. scene um is uh the fall of camelot um and we briefly kind of get up uh to see the demon's origin the demon of course um, is the uh, character featured on the cover uh, created years ago by Jack Kirby. Um, not one of my favorite Jack Kirby characters, but mm -hmm. it seems like DC always tries to kind of keep him in play and, you know, every once in a while bring back the he demon. He seems cool from the glimpse Yeah, it's of a that cool idea. Um, so we see the demon's origin uh, during the fall of Camelot and some stuff is kind of set up there and then we flash forward uh, to the Dark Ages um, in which uh, the demon and his companion, Madame Xanadu, mm -hmm. uh, who is a, a character that had been going before, uh, sort of meet up with all of these other immortal magical characters who existed back then. Vandal Savage, the immortal caveman, um, the Shining Knight, mm -hmm. uh, who was part of Grant Morrison's uh, Seven Soldiers uh, series from a few years back um and some other characters are in there as well um so all these kind of magical characters kind of converge at at this this tavern um and are put uh in opposition uh to this you know horde of uh bad guys <laughs> that, that are coming and i don't know what mm -hmm. their ultimate goal is going to be um so yeah, it's it seems like kind of a a, a fun, really team book um, set in the past, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, I like this one. I it had re I, I really thought it was very nice art by Diagonese Nevis. I thought it looked really good. Um, I've not previously read anything by Paul Cornell, although I've wanted to. I've heard really good things about him, um, and I did enjoy this. Uh, cool premise. Uh, I like that it didn't take itself too seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, it had kind of just a fun tone uh, to it, which I think is, is good. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a, a neat, uh, something a little bit different. Uh, it was superhero-esque, but it wasn't quite a superhero book, especially given that it doesn't take place in the present day. Although, um, in the, the back, some of the back material, the editors assure you that it will impact continuity in a very important way because I know that's very important to a lot of people <laughs> and it has to matter um, but for me it was it was a pretty fun book uh, I enjoyed it um, there are also dinosaurs in this issue and an exploding baby <laughs> a baby explodes way to sell it <laughs> right yes it does I'm not lying <laughs> a, a infant explodes like it bursts like a grape so <laughs> but it's all in good fun uh, so I, I liked uh, Demon Knights. Yeah, um, I really like Paul Cornell. I think he does like magic stuff really well. Yeah. He did a lot of magic stuff in Captain Britain and MI13. And this reminded me a lot of that title. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Kind of a fun mix it, of elements. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You know, it's just like, yep. it's pretty much collecting a team of magical characters, like going up against this force in the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. But that and it's cool. Like, that seems like it could be fun. And there's a lot of cool visuals and it's... dinosaurs with swords. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's comics, man. Yeah, it's, it's great. It was a great first issue. I mean, it, it, not a lot happened, but enough happened mm -hmm. to set up the series, and it won. It made me want to, you know, read more of the series. Nice, so. nice to see the Shining Knight again. Which I liked yeah, that book. Yeah, I thought the Shining Knight looked really goodness. Like it, 
I don't know. It was this very eye-catching how it was all golden. And... Yeah, uh, the art uh, really. Mm-hmm. I I was not familiar with this this artist before. Yeah, I'd never he has a either. really clean style, mm-hmm. um, which is not the style that I would um, I would have thought to assign to a book like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it re- it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks it looks quite nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah. solid the, book. The little glimpses of personalities I feel like we got from the from the various people that are mm-hmm. going to be involved in the book were really neat. I, I yeah, think, and I think it was a very funny. It was a very quick introduction to the characters, but you get them like right away in the yep. little space you got. You know, Madame Zendu with her head down. You know, and yep. you're like, oh, I just wanted to drink. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just like you kind of know these characters like immediately. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was I think it was like a terrific first issue for yeah. And there there seems to be a little bit of a love triangle with Madame Xanadu and Jason Blood, who turns into the demon yeah, and the demon, but they're not the same person. So she's mm-hmm. kind of like two timing him with himself. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, it's all kept really light mm-hmm. and fun, mm-hmm. um, even though um, you know there's this uh, evil kind of force coming mm-hmm. and that's making babies explode exploding babies and they're building a big story but um yeah so i liked it mm-hmm. demon knights uh was was definitely a good one yeah, good stuff yeah all right what's all right. next the next book is another very supernatural one yep continue the theme frankenstein agent of shade <laughs> and written by our good friend from mm-hmm. last week's surprise uh hit animal man jeff lemire yeah jeff lemire. Yep, Jeff Lemire, yeah. Animal Man was probably the best of the crop last week. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, I think it was the best this week, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alberto Ponticelli, I think, is the artist on this one. Um, but basically, this is like the Grant, the Frankenstein we saw in Grant Morrison's... Again, um, Seven Soldiers. Seven Soldiers. Yeah. Grant Morrison's very influential on this New 50. Yeah, well, he, I mean, Seven Soldiers was supposed to set those characters kind of in play. And not a lot's been done with them up until now, so I'm glad to see them kind of bring brought back, especially the, the, the Frankenstein. Yeah, character. Frankenstein's an awesome character. I love the Bride of Frankenstein, too, and her four arms. Yep. Um, but in this book, we, um, we see this town that is pretty much, like, taken over, like, overrun by monsters. Yeah. Big monsters. Big monsters. They eat people. Yep. They eat people. <laughs> or eat their flesh. Something. Yeah. Um, and pretty much Shade, this organization that kind of deals with supernatural threats, um, has sent the Bride of Frankenstein in, and she's disappeared after right. making kind of short work of the monsters that she came across, but we don't know what's happened to her. Um, now Shade is just like barely containing these monsters in this town. They're sending in Frankenstein with another group of supernatural characters. <laughs> yep. Um, with like a mummy, a vampire, a werewolf, and some kind of fish lady. Mm-hmm. That Shade, for the most part, created these these um, creatures, ex- with the exception of the mummy, who they're not really sure exactly who he is, but he's helping them. So, mm-hmm. so yay on him. Yeah, so there's <laughs> basically a group of yeah. monsters. It's kind yeah. of patterned on the classic universal monsters yeah. Yeah. Um, that work for uh, this this agency that mm-hmm. combats supernatural threats. So similar to uh, something like BPRD or Hellboy. Yeah, yeah, they're just kind of thrown into this war zone. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to try to like save any civilians they come across. They're trying to find out what happened to the Bride of but Frankenstein. Ultimately, we'll rescue uh, Frankenstein's bride. Yep, exactly, and stop this threat. Since it seems like monsters just keep coming, they're obviously coming from somewhere. Yep. So figure out what's going on. Yeah, stop them. Um, but yeah, I really, really love this book i mean it was another very really um, liked it. yeah <laughs> i really it was a very straightforward one again you know we're meeting this team pretty much going in and fighting monsters mm-hmm. but um yeah the characters are all great that they introduced and here the team of monsters mm-hmm. i like the um the doctor character that frankenstein meets that kind of sends him in the field that's frankenstein's father is it the f- okay well, which father i assume meaning time. The, yeah father time mm-hmm. um which i'm assuming means Maybe the inventor of Frankenstein. Although I'm not sure. I don't yeah, remember sure. Frankenstein's origin. But yeah, it's it's this character who is now in the form of like a young girl. Yeah, he's been put in this body of this young girl. So it's so. very quirky, yeah. weird characters. <laughs> but it's I don't know. Just all the elements that I think were introduced here were like really cool. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's like immediately it's just action, action, and just well, a lot it started of cool out with stuff. a lot of talking. I have to say. And at first I was like, there's a lot of words. Well, I mean, the very beginning scene is like this monster attack in the town. Yeah, you have that. And then it goes into traditional But then shade. once you go to Shade, it's a bit of an info dump. Yeah. But I thought it was all done because 
you just kind of had to establish for people what shade was, mm -hmm. how the organization works. So, and even that was really interesting. That's not really a criticism. Um, I'm just saying, you know, stick stick with it through that initial part. Yeah. And um, yeah, then it gets it gets rolling. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I agree with you. Um, this this was really similar to Demon Knights in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, in both we have we're introduced to two new teams both anchored by a central character, the demon in the case of Demon Knights, Frankenstein in the case of Frankenstein, Agent of Shade. Um, so we've got these two teams, um, you know, but kind of unconventional teams. One back in medieval times, one a group of horror monster characters. And again, the kind of uh, point of both books just seemed to me to be, let's have fun. Let's throw mm -hmm. a bunch of fun, good elements in there get a good story, fun, quirky characters that play off of each other. Um, in both cases, they succeed, like, readily. Yeah. And, yeah, and the art, I think, in this one is really nice, too. I agree. Mm -hmm. I really like the art uh, by Ponticelli, is mm -hmm. the name of the artist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a kind of a, a rougher, kind of sketchier uh, style, which is appropriate for all the monsters. Mm -hmm. and... But great designs to the monsters, mm -hmm. and the, the little side characters in the group. And... Yeah. Yep, I totally agree with you. Uh, along with uh, Demon Knights, I uh, I like Frankenstein Agent of Shade a lot. I think they were probably the two best ones this week, and for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, yeah, but they do have a different feel to the books. Yep, different vibe. Especially, I think it is just pretty much you know the the time period of the other one with these like other older characters in the DC universe that are here kind of give that like a cool medieval vibe, and this one just has like a, just a supernatural like fun vibe to it overall. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's I great. yeah you know I'd probably give you know maybe if I had to pick one or the other you know probably the exploding baby might tip it over into mm. Demon Knight's favor but they're both really good and uh, man Jeff Lemire I'm telling you I think I, and I told you um, the, earlier this week I I think Jeff because uh, it seems like we reviewed Animal Man positively on our last show um, and it seems as though I've seen online a lot of people seem to have responded really strongly. To New 52 in general, but to that book uh, in particular. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Jeff Lemire, this he might be kind of the next um, someone like uh, uh, Ed Brubaker, who comes mm -hmm. from kind of independent comics, but then ends up becoming a real important creative force um, in uh, the DC universe. You know, they've got him on kind of these oddball characters now, um, but uh, we'll see. I mean, he could he could be a pretty major player, uh, certainly doing good work in this book and in Animal Man.